We are live in the San Francisco Chronicle newsroom. I'm on here on election night. I'm John Diaz, the Chronicle's editorial page editor. With me is editor-in-chief Audrey Cooper. And we're welcoming our special guest, Christine Pelosi, to talk about everything that is going on tonight. Uh, uh, Christine, let me just start by asking you about which races you're focused on and, and what trends, if any, you see in the early returns. Well, obviously, I'm focused on Nancy Pelosi for Congress. So <laughs> bias is ridiculous. <laughs> How's she doing? I do. She's doing. Mom's doing great. Hi, mom. Now go to bed. We'll get you results tomorrow. No, they're all in D.C. working. So it's it's imagine. unfortunate. We last week, my mom actually voted last week because the high school students out of Parkland um, started a, a national high school voter registration day, and so they wanted people to register mm -hmm. to vote on May 29th. So Nancy Pelosi voted early, so she could send a message out in support of the kids. So I, I'm speaking of the kids, the big issue I'm actually following locally tonight is Proposition G. My daughter goes to public school. My stepson went to public school here. And so we want their educators to get a well-deserved raise. And I've been phone banking um, for um, and organizing on that issue as a volunteer. And it's interesting when you call and say, I'm a public school parent. And I want to talk to you about my kid. They'll say, oh, I know the teachers need a raise. <laughs> Almost everybody agrees. Yeah. How they're going to vote or not is a different story. But at least we were getting positive response to the fact that as public school parents, we volunteer at our schools. We do a lot to help the educators. But they can't afford to stay here unless they get paid better. Well, and they're not, not only can they not afford to live here because almost none of us can. It's ridiculous. Uh, but they're really badly paid. What does an average teacher make in San Francisco? Well, it's actually a very good salary. It's just not for what they have to do. <laughs> you know, in other words, if you're, if you're making um, fifty to $60,000, which was, which was what the offerings were last year, they were trying to cover a teacher shortage, and they still came up dozens of educators short. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, that's a lot of money in most places in right. the country. Right. But for San Francisco living... <laughs> It means you can't be married. You can't have a kid. It, it means, as actually, as Nancy Pelosi said on Sunday at the Get Out the Vote rally, it means that we're saying to them, your children are less important than the children you teach. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair either. So when you look at what rents are in the city, um, just to about my daughter Bella's in third grade. Her kindergarten teacher moved back to Ohio when she got... Um, when she and her husband had a baby. One of the first grade teachers moved home to the Midwest because she wanted to have kids and uh her teacher she has now whom she really like he, he doesn't even live in the city uh, because you know th so this is what we're talking about you want to have continuity in the schools it, it does take a village and and it's important for the kids to be able to be on the school campus and have eyes on them from their kindergarten teacher their first grade grade teacher and so forth watching them grow up helping them become the people that they are so i think it's really important that we pass um the parcel tax tonight and also that we keep in mind that the business roundtable has put out a statewide ballot measure for signatures the signatures have come back in they haven't been validated yet but it's quite likely that in november we'll be discussing a ballot measure that would require all parcel taxes even for local school districts to be a two-thirds vote and not a simple majority so, so this important won't that go this, away. this important that this one wins because it needs 50.1 percent plus one to pass parcel g right now in san francisco or local measure g the parcel tax is winning 53 percent to 46.8 percent somewhere in there it's about a four thousand vote spread do you feel good about that or is that disappointing to you well i'd like to know where those ballots are coming from we did a big big push for election day voting mm -hmm. and i know that they don't include my family because we just voted but uh today but which is a whole other story. But um, I, I do think that um, it would be helpful if we can really get that story out there. I'm wearing red. I usually wear orange for the Giants or blue for the Warriors or blue for the Democrats. <laughs> but I'm wearing red now for the educators, the public school educators across the country that have been saying, look, we are not only the teachers and the educators, we're also uh, the counselors, we're the school nurses, we're the people who are feeding your children and nurturing your children and... Um, being there where in some cases, if they're on free and reduced um, breakfast and lunch, um, they're really the what is taking place for the family meal that would normally be happening at home if people could um, afford to eat. Let me ask you uh, about the congressional races, obviously, um, uh, for your mother, the would-be speaker again. 
uh, obviously a big thing. There's seven races in, in California that are particularly focused on, but the problem the Democrats are having is too much democracy in some of those races. You can never have too much democracy. I think there's always a tension between saying to people, look, this is America. You want to run, you should run. I write about this in my campaign boot camp book. I say, you, you, should, you can't be a dream killer. I had one uh, client once who sent me over and said, I want you to give me the real analysis on this executive in my company that I'd like to see run for office. And I, stupid me, I told him the truth. And I said, well, honestly, it's a really tough district. He, he hasn't lived there very long. He hasn't done a lot of community service, so he should start at something else and then kind of work his way to Congress. But his entry point should have been Congress. And people said, oh, my God, what would you do telling him the truth like that? And I said, well, it's what I do. And they said, well, what you should have said is these are all the pros and cons. This is his decision because this was his, this was his dream. And, and, and he, he wasn't going to win for all the reasons that you told him. But now he gets to blame you for why he didn't get to try. So I thought, okay, well, that's a fair point. So I think we should be honest with people. Take a look at your prospects. How are you doing? What's your connection with the voters? Do they know you? Do they think you know them? And in this case, because people looked at Donald Trump being president and said, well, he wasn't elected before, so I can run as a first timer. He was just his you know, straight raw his self. self to people. I'm going to offer that too. So I could win like Donald Trump. Yeah, maybe, but it's really hard to clear a field of 16 people. He had some other That's things hard. going for him, clinically. It's and also, he had, a, he had a regular primary. He didn't right. have a jungle primary. He right. might not have won. He may not have been their nominee. Um, if, if the whole presidential was a top two, it very easily could have been Hillary and Bernie, and he never would have been in the top two. So right. the point being, we have a lot of democracy going on. I'm hopeful that the Democrats will place in every district so that we can run in every district. One thing we told them was the one thing that's important for us to do is to talk about our values, to talk about advancing our agenda. You can't just be anti-Trump because Republicans always come home. And if people see you chasing Republican voters who, by the way, are going to come home, they're going to be mad that you're not talking about their issues and what they care about. And um, just do a ballot chase. The more Democrats who vote, the more there's a chance that one of us can get up there. Every election, it's a get out the vote. But is it also really about getting out the vote in Southern California in those races? It's really about getting out the vote. And when we talk about why you would get out the vote, again, when I was on the phone with people saying, I'm a public school parent, I want, it wasn't just, hey, here's your polling place. It was, let me tell you why my child's teachers need a race. Most people were already with me or agreeing with me before I finished my speech. Uh, yeah. but, but the point is... Get out the vote is always going to be a persuasion and a mobilization because mm -hmm. maybe they're deciding um, whether or not they support you or maybe they decided they support you, but they're deciding whether or not they want to bother voting for you. And mm -hmm. sometimes they just want to see you hustle for it. They want to see you work for it. I, I have had, you know, exchanges with people that are like, well, I don't know. I don't know that I agree with that. Give me some facts. And so you have to Put yourself through the paces. So I do think it's not just a matter of calling people and saying, here's the day that you vote. Most people know that. Right. It's a matter of saying, here's why we really need your vote and why we value your voice. Well, let's go back to the, the people running and not discouraging people. I was struck today when I looked at my ballot that you could vote for a woman in every single case in San Francisco and still not be voting for somebody who doesn't have a very good chance of women uh, winning, women winning. Um, is the, you know We talk about the year of the woman. Is this coincidence or is this really about women saying, yeah, I can make it this year and we're fed up with the me too, the patriarchy, the all of it put together and we're going to put our names forward? Well, one of the things that we see at We Said Enough, which is our nonprofit that we formed after we wrote the first Me Too politics letter that shook up Sacramento and, and is shaking up um, various <laughs> uh, various things. because And we're still, I had to write a post this weekend because we still have people who didn't get to memo and are like sexually harassing people on campaigns. And we're really? Like, still? No. Yeah, still. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> stop it now. Just stop. Okay? <laughs> stop. Um, no, seriously. The fact that we have to have, in the middle of our get out the vote, we had to figure out a buddy system. Um, really? You would think, yeah, really. So there, there's a buddy more system for women. We we have to talk about a buddy system where women stick together to fend off 
yes, the harassment? Or uh, when you know that there's a wow. known creeper on a campaign where you make sure there's a there's a buddy there. Now, it was a little easier to do during Get Out the Vote because you would say, oh, of course, there's right. so many more volunteers in the headquarters. But we told certain people, don't be alone. Have someone with you and just make sure that you're just keeping it about what it is. Because when you think about it, when it's go time, and my friend, my friend Tom Kelly was, was with us here in studio. Um, um, one of the things that we talk about from the recovery movement is that when you, when you are most likely to um, relapse, you should halt if you're hungry, angry, lonely, mm -hmm. or tired. And that's all halt. things during an election. All things. Yeah. And when you're in an election, like, oh, my God, you weren't a smoker, but you want to smoke. Or, oh, you, you know, you, you've been trying to keep it in, but you feel like sending that nasty text. Or you, um, in some cases, you can't control your ego or your id, and you need to halt and say, no, the, the attention you're getting on the campaign is about the issues. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. And so it, we're not there as campaign workers to indulge the egos of the campaign managers or the candidates. We're there to really service the voters. And uh, so I think it's really important when you look at these people who are in the final hours of a campaign, it's when they tend to make a mistake. They're tired, so they say something that's a gaffe that gets played over and over. Or they um, they get drunk because they go, oh, well, like it's, it's all almost over. Let's just go out drinking and bond as a team. No, that's a really bad idea. And um, you, you, can, you can do that later after the election. You don't need right. to do that now. And, and I, I, think that, I think that being mindful of your call to service, your purpose at all times is really critical. And it's easy to lose that on a deadline. So the year of the woman, is this it? It's the year of the feminist. It's the year of female and feminist mm -hmm. candidates. But I think even the men are being called to talk about how strong they are for women. And not just that, but also to acknowledge that women are telling them back, we're not taking one for the team. You know, conservative women are saying, I don't care if you're good on so-called family values if you're going to be harassing people. Liberal men are being told, we don't care if you're a good vote for women's rights if you're not treating women right. right. So either... Wherever you are on the spectrum, I think that there's a real sense that this is not something that's going to be acceptable. And also, that's true for women and men. So you're talking about this in terms of the dynamic of the campaigns. Is it also playing out with the electorate? Is it, this is something that voters are demanding? Well, I think voters are demanding people who are real and people who are dependably themselves. And if somebody, um, they're going to look and say, well, who do you have around you? Who are your people? Like, you know, what's, what's your situation? Your squad, yeah. Right? But, like, where's your family? I always look, you know, at people and I'm like, okay, where's your family? Who's with you? Are there real people around you or is it just sort of a professional team like do you really seem to have close bonds with your girlfriends people you knew when you were growing up your parents your siblings like what does the campaign feel like to those of us who don't know you we're going to look at your personal life as as it is it is a shorthand for how you treat the people closest to you is some semblance of how you might treat us so i think that's why these you know these things matter i also think with the voters they're like we we still feel the blight of urban poverty. We still feel the racism and the sexism. We still feel that people have been held back and that they're not satisfied with, with the advances that have been made on the economic justice front. And so if someone is busy, you know, getting to office and treating the trappings of power as being, I get to um, hobnob with very wealthy people and, you know, hit on whoever I want, that's not a person who's going to be caring about me. That's not going to be a person who cares about my daughter's public school mm -hmm. educators and them doing things on a shoestring. So some of it's just that we don't want creepers. And yeah. some of it's just that we don't want people who are being self-indulgent at a time where a lot of people feel like we don't, we don't have a lot of room for indulgence and self-indulgence. Right. You mentioned that Republicans have a way of coming home, and we've really seen that in the polls recently mm -hmm. with... Uh, President Trump consolidating a lot of support within the Republican Party. Is the blue wave still there? Well, the blue wave is still there because Democrats, see, Republicans come home. Republican and Democrats tend to stay home unless we push them out and we get them um, motivated and mobilized. I was having a conversation with someone before I came on here where we were having this, uh, you know, loving but tough discussion about what Democrats can do about the black vote. 
Barack Obama got 93% of the black vote. Hillary Clinton got something like 71, was polled at 71% of the black vote and ended up being a little bit higher. But when you look at, um, you know, are we, do we have candidates, are we putting forward black women, black men for office and voting for them in the numbers that we should in the Democratic Party? Because that's one sign, right? That's, that's one sign that we respect the voters, right? You, you can say you respect the voters, but did... You know, and again, in San Francisco, you could vote for London Breed, Malia Cohen, and Tony Thurman on your back. You know, you had choices. Mm -hmm. right. um, so, but I, I think people are going to be looking at that. And they're going to say, okay, well, is it the year of the white woman or is it the year of the black woman? That, those are two very different kinds of dynamics, right? Is it the year of the Latina woman? Is it the year of the immigrant woman? So where are we, where are we going to be um, pushing our candidates. And, and I think that's one way that Democrats can be advanced. But we have to assume that Donald Trump is going to get every Republican vote and that every Republican voter is a way of helping Donald Trump, who voted for him in 2016, is going to vote again for him in 2018. If you make that assumption, then you say, how do we bring up the Democratic vote? How do we bring up the people who were not registered to vote but are now registering? And the kids at Parkland and Chicago and other places are trying to do that, say, well, we'll get them voting on on guns because you haven't done anything. And Betsy DeVos today incredibly said Second. that the task force about guns in schools will not involve a discussion of guns. That's enough to make a lot of kids register to vote and vote. <laughs> exactly. What do you talk about then, I wonder, if not for that? Yep. What do you talk about? Well, Will Durst had a, I saw him perform last weekend and his, his like funny but also make you cry joke was, Betsy DeVos's answer to guns in schools is fewer schools. <laughs> we, we were talking before we came on about some of the horror stories that you're hearing on uh, at the polls today. Maybe you can give us a sense of what you're, you're hearing. Well, I heard this afternoon from people who were getting out the vote in congressional districts in Southern California, sort of here and there anecdotally that people that had been organized to vote, mobilized to vote through labor unions, through the Democratic Party, through Mi Familia Vota and other um, organizations um, were showing up at the polls and not seeing their name on there. Um, then it became clear that the LA, when a bunch of calls were coming into the LA registrar, they admitted that there were upwards of 118,000 people whose names weren't on the rolls. Adam Schiff, congressman from Southern California, and others were really pushing people to say, stay in line, keep voting, you know, and pushing them to find a solution. Antonio Villaraigosa put out a statement saying they should extend the election hours, and now he's saying days because of all these people who were turned away that he knows his operation had identified as his voters. Henry Winkler, the Fonz, the Fonz tweeted couldn't vote. <laughs> that his name was not on the ballot. How do you know? Henry Winkler. How do you lose yeah. track how of the fonts? How do you lose the fonts? <laughs> but I'll tell you, my stepson turned 18. I made sure he registered to vote on time with the deadline. We were very excited. It was going to be his first time he was ever going to vote. So my husband, my daughter, and I, we all went down to the polls with him. And I wanted to take his picture, getting his ballot. And they're like, he's not here. Now, me, I'm an attorney. I've been an elections attorney. I've written two books on politics. <laughs> Don't mess with this mom. <laughs> I knew. So I went to go look him up. I couldn't find him. Because you had to, to even get your voter registration ID number, you have to show, you have to give them the last four numbers of your social mm -hmm. and your California driver's license number or California ID number. Well, he's a Lyft kid. They don't, these kids don't have driver's licenses. Right. He doesn't have one yet. So he didn't have that. So I couldn't look him up and show them and say, here's his number. I had to call the Department of Elections, which I did. Several minutes later, a wonderful woman named Cheryl, and I worked it out. The problem was they didn't have anything to compare a signature to because they were waiting on his driver's license signature, which he doesn't have because which he doesn't have a driver's have. license. So once we worked through all of that, he got a provisional ballot. Now, in fairness to the poll workers, they were willing to give him a provisional ballot in the moment, right. the first second, but I was like, I don't want a provisional ballot if I don't have to have one because I don't want you to put something on the table and then burn the table and then, you know, right. I wanted his vote to count. So... But With it does good knowledge of the process, 12 minutes it took me to get that kid a ballot. Yeah. Okay, now replicate that 118,000 times, and that's the fiasco of Los Angeles. And, and you know, I, I almost, I would say half of the time I go to vote, I see some small 
violation of what they're supposed to do. And our poll workers are very hardworking. They get paid very little. They have real lives and real jobs. They do amazing work. But I've been asked a lot of times for my ID, you know, things that you're not supposed to be asking. So you do have to have a very high level of knowledge about your rights to be able to do that. You can see why in these cases people would just go get coffee instead. Exactly. Well, and so then, so now we have to say, is this is is the decision? I mean, Diane Feinstein's already moved on and to the finals, yes. if you will, for U.S. Senate, and Gavin Newsom has already moved on as as in the as a finalist for governor. But just about everybody else, I mean, Betty Yee, you know, others others will. But for the person who's going to be the number two, that is very very much in doubt. Mm-hmm. And for these congressional races, getting back to John's question. The congressional races that have some of these, you know, irregularity issues that are not the fa- fault of the voters, and they're not the fault of the poll worker. They're they're the responsibility of the Department of Elections. How does this happen? Why don't they do a run through of an election and say, hey, do we have all the names we're supposed to have? Mm-hmm. Um, that's also why I think two things are going to happen. One, you're going to see a lot of contested elections over the next few days. There's going to be a lot of doubt. It could take a very mm-hmm. long time. So some of our some of our our matchups won't be set for a little bit. That's certainly number 1. Number 2, the other thing that we have to do to look into the future is we really have to get more people signed up as absentee ballot mm-hmm. voters. They everyone needs to recheck their voter registration to make sure it's totally according to Hoyle. And if you sign up for a permanent absentee ballot, then at least you have that. You have not only do you have it, but if you don't have it, you're able to call them ahead of election with, day. Ahead of election day, and then you have another option because it's hard to have an option at seven thirty at night with right. a half hour to go. Right. Any last thoughts on election night? Well, I think uh, San Francisco. Um, we should all probably take a deep breath because we will have had many mayors. <laughs> in, in the very the past short. several yeah. months. I mean, remember, I, I the last time I saw Ed Lee, he was at the um, San Francisco Interfaith Council uh, Thanksgiving, pre-Thanksgiving Day breakfast. It was mm-hmm. the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. He was talking about his plans to fight homelessness and really encouraging the business community and the religious community to work together, something we have talked about before, John, and you have editorialized along with Audrey about. Um, and he was talking about that, and we had no idea that that was the last time that we were going to see him out and so when we look at we had Edley and then we had London Breed and now we have Mark Farrell and now we'll have somebody else either London or Mark or Jane or Angela somebody else but four mayors in six months is you know seven yeah. months that, that's a lot it's a lot for the city it's a lot for the the amazing people who do the work at City Hall despite all the other chaos it also means that we have different supervisors you know we may have another supervisor if if london or jane wins we may have a new supervisor the way things are going tonight for um, rafael mandelman we may have another supervisor so we have a lot of transition that's happening locally and i think that it's important for us to remember that san franciscans are going to need to come together and we're going to need to have this board and this new mayor whoever the person is pass a budget a multi-billion dollar budget in very short order. So I would hope that we remember um, what we've all kind of collectively been through over the last several months and that we can at least spend the next few weeks trying to reassess the priorities that I think most of the candidates for mayor agreed on in terms of housing for the homeless, expanding child care, supporting public education, supporting our immigrant communities. Um, So... That is my election night hope, is that we remember that there's more that unites us than divides us. That is a great perspective to end it on. Christine Pelosi, thank you so much. Appreciate you coming in. Audrey thank Cooper. you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'll see you again <laughs> yeah, pretty we'll, soon. We'll, we'll be back again shortly. <laughs> you don't get and rid of me that easily, John. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in to this edition, and we will be back sh- shortly with further analysis and guests.